Sephira Lou and welcome to my channel. Hello guys and welcome to this week's Sketchbook Sunday. This week's topic as chosen by you guys is choosing the perfect colour palette. As always the poll for next week's question will go up here so that you can decide on what topic you would like to see next week. But for now I am using a Moleskin Art Plus sketchbook. There. I will do a review on this when it's full and we're getting there, we're almost full uh, and let you know uh, as well as a sketchbook tour on what my personal thoughts are on this sketchbook but for now let's grab our lovely English breakfast cup of tea and our pencils and as always let's discuss okay so this topic is a very interesting topic and it's talking about choosing the perfect palette in order to understand the palettes, it's best off to go back to basics and look at the colour wheel. I do have some examples that I've done here, but it's best off for me to actually show you um, by looking at this here. This is your colour wheel. You would have seen this very often when you started in school to understand how colours are and what secondary, tertiary and primary colours are but we can use this colour wheel to actually help us with our colouring. So you have primary colours and the logus colours, I hope I'm saying that correctly, secondary, complementary, intermed intermediate and split complementary. Primary colours are obviously the colours that are opposite each other in the colour wheel. Secondary are the secondary colours that are next to it. Tertiary is the one in between them or intermediate as they've put there and the log list is the colours that are next to each other and these tend to be the colours that people use the most in hue videos so for example a yellow to red or a purple to blue or a blue to yellow they tend to be the colours that people will use in a very limited palette and then you've got split complementary where you choose a uh, colour here and instead of choosing the colour directly opposite the colour wheel you choose the colours that are next to it. So this is something that is very simple for you to learn straight away. If you're going to do for a limited palette design you'll choose anything from the yellow to the orange to create a yellow E piece. Um, as same if you're going to do a limited palette with red it'd be orange to red, purple to blue, violet and then violet to you know or blue to green, uh, blue green sorry and then from green to yellow. These are the easiest colours that you can create a very limited palette with but how can we choose the perfect palette for our characters? It's all to do with choosing like what, char uh, what suits your character the best. So I tend to actually use a lot of analog list. Uh, I'm going to keep saying that word wrong. Um, but I tend to use that a lot in a lot of my colour schemes. And this is because it can create a, quite a calming effect. Whereas video, uh, like so certain pieces that do complementary colours where you choose the colour that's opposite the colour wheel, this tends to create quite a jarring and graphic design effect. If you are to do a very simple colour palette, it usually tends to best off work if you are using the analogless effect instead of using the complementary. Because the complementary, the colours are so bright and so vibrant against each other that you can it can create quite a jarring effect. Also to put in fact is hue, tint and shade. So if you're going for a yellowy colour, I would suggest your best part for shading would be to use either a green or an orange depending on whether or not you want to go for a cool palette or whether or not you want to go for a warm palette. Um, for example, if I am shading in a character's skin, I will tend to use a purpley colour um, or a slight blue hint and this is because this creates a shade. Instead of going for, for example, I'll show you here. If I'm shading in, in purple, 9 times out of 10 I won't choose like a darker purple because sometimes it doesn't work. Instead, I actually tend to go for a deeper blue. Um, well, that colour doesn't best example, probably this one would be the best example. I tend to go for a blue if I'm shading in purple and this is just simply because when you use too much of the same colour sometimes it doesn't create the desired shading effect that you're after. 
Also to um, think about is when you are choosing the palette is to try and um, think about your warm colours and your cool colours. If you're thinking about this, this basically explains it here. Um, the warm colour palettes uh, tend to give you uh, passion, happiness, enthusiasm and energy. Um, whereas cool colours tend to be a very, it says here, can give a sense of calm or professionalism. So the basic colour schemes are here, a complementary, analogous, triadic, split complementary and tri... I can never say... Tetratic. And they're basically simple rules to match colours. So if, for example, you are doing something that's shading in... Uh, shading in... If you're colouring something orange, your best shading would be uh, red. If you're, oh gosh, <laughs> if you're doing something in a purple, you may not think of using any of these other colours, but they can help give your art a more pop, a more graphic design. Um, this just basically goes into explaining about each of the colour schemes. So my personal favourites when using colours is I actually do just really love using purples and blues and pinks. I think these colours are very uh, very nice to each other, they complement each other very well and they tend to give a very, I feel like they create quite a mystical feel. Um, whereas if I'm going for something that's more earthy, I would stick to my greens, my oranges, my browns, very warm tones. And the reason why I tend to pick uh, that for quite earthy tones is it just tends to look a little bit better. For example, this picture is done using co uh, using the complementary method, which is colours that are completely opposite to each other in the colour wheel. It doesn't really work until you add another tone in, and I added a little bit of blue in this, and this helped lift out the character a little bit more. Yes, it's still a jarring colour scheme, but I adding that little bit of colour in the middle of it, it really helped sell the design. This one is the... Um, Sorry, I'm trying to think here. <laughs> this one is, I believe, the triadic, um, which is three colours, like in a triangle format across the wheel. So you see here, right? And the best way to use that colour scheme in this is to choose one as your main colour, and then the other two as sort of like accent colours. Um, this will not only help the design, but it will also um, help the purple pop a lot. So for example, you can see that I'm using purple to line, I'm using purple to do a lot of the stuff, but because the orange and the green is there, it doesn't make that seem as like too much one tone. It's not just one piece that it's going off, it's going off quite a lot. So I could like use little bits of green and orange and yes, it's an interesting colour scheme, but it's also, it complements that part. It's also using a lot of secondary colours, this section, but you could use it to just use primary colours, you could use it to do uh, pretty much like most of the colour palette. But essentially, that is choosing there, two secondary colours and a, um, oh my gosh, tertiary colour at the same time. So it chooses one one um they can you, you can use like a secondary color or a primary color and then it tends to split off and do two um sorry my brain isn't working and it tends to split off and use two like tertiary colors against it so your main is your secondary or primary which tends to be quite bright tones and then you can use the um the tertiary colours to kind of balance it out and there's also like different hues that you can use which will um, really help and push your design. I would probably say in order to best understand your colours and to understand what colour palette would work best for what work you're going for, I would probably suggest actually just trying out a load of different colours. Like a lot of the stuff I didn't know when I first started drawing, but the more I got into drawing and the more I was researching what colours would work best, I found that I understood a little, quite a lot more about colour and the more you colour it's such a thing to be afraid of because I get afraid of using colours but I like a lot of desaturated colours where um, a lot of stuff uh, tends to can be quite vibrant or it's also dependent on what hue and tint and saturation. There's so many different factors when it comes to choosing the perfect palette 
that it can be quite difficult to think of. I would probably suggest that if you are really struggling and you seem to, you know, having a little bit of complication with it, um, do a little bit of research, have a look and see what works best. I really enjoy doing limited colour palette challenges because I feel like they help me understand my use of colour. And that would be my suggestion. If you're not sure on what palette to use, try doing a limited palette and then see whether or not that helps you understand your use of colour. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I really hope that this has helped in any way, shape or form. If you've done any art during this video, leave a comment down below uh, or tag me on Instagram and or Twitter. I'm sorry I didn't really do much drawing on this topic today, but I felt like it was a lot more that I had to explain more than actually show you when I was drawing. Um, it would be easier for me to explain this properly probably in a bigger video and let me know if you would like me to do a video that would actually touch on this subject with more examples um, and let me know if that would be more helpful to you in the comment section down below. If you like this video leave a like up there or down there or wherever the like button is, I don't know these days. <laughs> uh, make sure you voted in the poll to let me know what topic you'd be interested in me seeing next. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video and as always folks, stay creative. Bye!